I was marshalling at the wash pool and I said to Chris, you know, the radio didn't work. We took, you know, we, we, the, the radio, well, we didn't say that. We said the radio didn't work at the wash pool hut. And Chris was a little bit sort of uh, upset about this, that, you know, I'd gone to all this trouble to get the radio and it didn't work. And he kept going on about it and going on about it. Well, three months after the event, I admitted that the reason it probably didn't work was because it was still in the boot of the car back at the end. We didn't actually bother carrying it because we didn't know how to use it. So, hey, you were all safe, sort of. <clears throat> but I suppose that's that's part of it. Just you know, it is one of the things that I would say um, is you know you don't go lightly into the uh, tower roads. You know, there's some atrocious weather up there. You know, look at the weather conditions at the moment, the amount of water that's going through. I've been caught out in that in, at times, even when the SARS have tried to get in and then said, no, we're not going in, it's too dangerous because the water levels have just gone ridiculous. So just be very, very careful. Um, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, there's never, I, I can't remember, I put these slides together a while ago and um, th there's a lot going on at work. Uh, I work at the Treasury, we've got a budget to announce. Um, <laughs> um, so I can't quite remember what I've put in here. Uh, there's never a right time to do an SK. Well, yeah, and it's all in your head. It, it is, and I think Chris talked about this earlier, it's about the mental side of it. Because one of the things that, well, Chris said those are nice words, so thank you about me. The one thing I enjoy about running about the Tuesday night crowd is that the bulk of the people, apart from probably Ian and I and one or two others, is most of them a good 20 years younger than me. Um, if not, and I'm looking at Glenn, another 10 years younger than that. So I'm, you know, I'm the old guy. I'm, I'm the one that's turning 54, uh, and I'm still doing it. And all I'd be saying is, you know, it is in the head, because I was fortunate with my background that when I first was asked to do a really long run, it was 105, 110 kilometers. Um, I was in my mid twenties and I had 10 days notice I was doing it. And they started at noon to make sure you went through the night. And I'm going, holy shit. But I did it, it might have taken me 18 hours. And then over the next five years, I got it down and I came fifth and I did it in about 11 hours. But again, fortunately, that first time I did it, I ended up, you had to group up overnight with, a guy, with guys, because whoever was there, and I ended up doing it with this guy called Alan Heaton. Now he had won this event 10 times. He was also number one on the Bob Graham list. So he's been around since the 60s running. That's sort of, you know, he was doing it when I was born. So, you know, when we think about some of the things we're talking about now and what we're, we're pushing ourselves to limit, people have been doing this for years and years and years. So, you know, you, that's what inspires me, but it's the mental side of it. So it is, it's all in your head. This is what it's like all the time. <laughs> These are the tower rules. This, this is coming down off Bridge Peak and all the way through and and that's the only time I've seen it like that. Because uh, I go up there and if I'm going up there, don't join me. You know, I, I, when we did, the, one of the things that probably wasn't obvious is earlier this year when we, when I did the SK, um, Dave set off on the same day about, well, he, he did it at three o'clock in the morning. Gene set off at 3.30, Marta and I set off at four o'clock in the morning and the forecast was for windy but good weather. So I put a singlet on and I put sunscreen on and I was ready with lightweight gear. Yeah, right. Uh, sunscreen actually works as water repellent, which is useful because that's all we saw. Wind, rain, more rain. And I've never been across the, the, the tops in weather like that. But with good support with people like Chris, Pavel and other people, they get you through, they help you. So choose your mates wisely. So, the other thing that was running around in my mind is this quote, pain is temporary, pride is permanent. I'm not, I was sitting listening to everybody else earlier, I don't actually know why I did the SK. Um, I knew it was there, because I've trained with Colin going years back, and that always inspired me, but I don't know actually why I then decided, I'm gonna do it this weekend. Um, and it seemed like a good idea, but I'm one of those people that just thinks it's a good idea, so I'll say yes, because I don't like saying no and then I just do it. So you've got to be a bit pig-headed, you've got to be a bit, get, get it in your own mind and have it, you know, the pain is temporary. And like people have said, yeah, there's a certain pain threshold you hit when you get to about five hours and you can then continue beyond that because the pain doesn't get any worse. It just sort of plateaus and you just, well, keep going or take painkillers. 
but get your head in the right space. Well, no, I, I do. I, I remember Chris years ago saying, so at what point in a run do you take the painkillers? And I said, an hour before I set off. Because <laughs> I know I'm going to hit it. So I've now got these Panadol that, uh, for uh, uh, osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis. They uh, release uh, a painkiller over eight hours. And that's probably about right for me. And then you can take some more. And they don't. Uh, bugger up your guts and all the rest of it so watch your kidneys but yeah um, that's what I do but get your head in the right space first and you know failure is not to be considered and one or two people said you know like Dave you know if it's foul weather actually you know embrace it you know just challenge it it's challenging you but don't go oh it's a bit wet it's not very nice I don't want to go embrace it just go for it you know other people have been out in worse uh, just just do it um, you know, and break it down into manageable parts. That was one of the things that Chris was saying. You know, you don't think about, you know, when he started at the start of it, it's 24 hours. You actually break it down and say, oh, I want to get to East Peak. I want to get to West Peak. I want to get to Dundas. Major point. I want to navigate off Dundas. I've never managed to navigate off Dundas correctly yet. I always get it wrong. Um, but break it down into manageable parts and don't, you know, you know, play with the mind because, you know, just play with it. It's just this bit, then that bit, and then that, that bit, and then you go, oh shit, have I done all that? Just break it down. So it's all in the mind. Uh, focus on the next bit, then the next. Uh, yeah, bad weather is to be expected. And that bad weather, just, you know, welcome it. Because um, if it doesn't happen, then good. When it, I, I was fortunate as well, I, I did my, I did a Bob Graham uh, back in 1990 uh, and I'd go up into the English Lake District and we would have forecasts of uh, gale force winds on the tops of the Helvellyn where it's completely open, no protection, whatever, and you know, really, really high winds. And so we'd go and try and see what it was like to run on there and go, yeah, okay, if it's going to be gale force winds we can't do this because we got blown off. Then we got blown off. A side route, and then we went into the valley bottom. And went, oh, actually, it's manageable, but it tells us that you know, train in the lousy weather, and hopefully it'll be good on the day. Doesn't always work, but just just go with it. But the other thing, that negativity, it will play with your mind, and you've got to go through those cycles and just to slug at it, just keep going at it, because it is all in the mind. There's not many, and this is this was a great day. I did a um, well, I went in from Pode's Road near Levin and ran down to uh, Otaki Forks, just for a weekend on my own. Um, all weekend it had been foul, it had been clagged in and everything. When I got down towards Otaki Forks and looked back, that was the weather. So it really is not nice. It does this to you, it plays tricks with you. Just expect it to be lousy and sometimes it can be nice, but it won't be when you're up there. Not when I'm up there, it's just what I see. Okay, and the other one is, you know, the body will do what the mind tells it to. So play with the mind, work on the mind, the body will put up with it. If people, if you can read books about people that can cut their arm off to actually uh, survive and get out of a situation, then what we put our bodies through is nothing by comparison. I'm not saying you have to do that, I'm just saying that, you know, just the mind will, will, will lead you through it. Just, just use the mind. Do take the right gear. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Don't uh, skimp on the gear. I remember catching up with Gene at one point and I was all ready for giving up with uh, the whole SK. I got to Munger Hooker and decided, right, this is it. I'm going to pack in here. And I caught up with Gene and Gene said, you look about all in. Do you want to just follow me a bit closer for a while? And I'm like, yes. And I'm like, oh, shit. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> that was meant to be a no. <clears throat> because she looked at my gear and said, you're carrying a really lightweight, you know, waterproof, and it's like, yeah, it was forecast to be sunny. <laughs> I believe the forecast. So do take the right gear. Um, I'd set off with Marta. Marta at one point then said, this is not going to happen, so I'm going to pull back. So we had a PLB. She was carrying it. We had one of those spotter things that Chris said uh, we should carry she was carrying it. I'm really good at passing on gear to other people because it's lighter for me. I'm, I'm, I like sharing these things. But all I'm saying is carry the right gear for you and be self-sufficient. I was stupid. Really, really foolish. Because the weather was lousy. I knew there was gear for me at Kime. Well, I hope there was. Um, although I was really in trouble. But it's, it's, yeah, carry the right gear. Do get to know the track because 
you know, you will get lost at some point. There is that danger. We've all done it in terms of coming off Dundas. It's not the best of places. And I really want to go back and learn that bit. Uh, embrace the challenge. You know, reward yourself. Give yourself a little, you know, sort of, if I get to that point, I will do this for me. I will take an extra few minutes break. I will do this, that and the other. That's what you do. But I do say don't rely on others. I relied on a lot of people and they came through. They were really strong. But between the checkpoints, as I would put it, between those huts and what have you, where those people aren't and you're on your own, you have to rely on yourself. You have to be able to back yourself, know when to put your gear on, know what hypothermia looks like. I've been hit with hypothermia a couple of times, and so you've got to be able to recognise those things. You have to be able to rely on yourself as well. And it's not always like this, but so you have to be sensible. Don't underestimate the SK. Do think ahead. Um, I, I'm not fit, you know, I'm just an average sort of person. I'm not the strongest runner, I'm a pretty slow runner, but I just don't know when to say stop. So I just keep going. I'm just pig-headed. And I think that's what you need to be a little bit. Do think about your supporters. If you're doing your SK, these supporters coming into point, they'll have taken four or five hours to get in, and they'll take four or five hours to get out. And in actual fact, some ways, the easiest way is to keep going down the ridge. It's a lot easier than trying to come off Junction Knob and go all the way through Waita Waiwai in the dark and all that sort of jazz or coming in from Pode's Road and meeting you. So do think about what you're asking your supporters to do. It's a hell of a commitment. So, and do go prepared. And that's what it can look like. The, the, that's, that's the ladder there. And I'll be honest, that's what it looks like every time. I've been there eight times now and it always looks like that. That's probably one of the only times I've got a photo of it because it looked quite good. The rest of the time it's been worse, really, really worse. So, you know, the SKs are uh, not to be underestimated, but it's bloody good. It's great fun. So, go and do it. I can do it, and I'm, I'm 50, nearly 54, so if I can do it, you know, all of you can do it. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. That's it. That's it.